Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira Dent, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for being part of my Dental A Team family. I seriously love doing this podcast. I thought I was going to hate it, and I love it. I love it so much because I get to connect with you. I get to hear how this podcast is helping you and your practice be better. So if you have loved this podcast and you are willing to share, I would greatly appreciate if you'll share with your friends, if you'll leave us a review, if you'll give us five stars, anything you can do, just like you guys grow your practices, we're trying to grow this podcast to positively impact the world of dental. This is how we get to grow our Dental 18 family. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent. And Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental 18 Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Alrighty, guys, it is our Thursday, Monday morning mashup. What does this mean for all of you that are just joining us? That means our episode today is going to be one of those episodes that you can share with your team to use for your team meeting. We made these specific for you so that way those meetings are hard to come up with. Whether you have your meetings on Monday mornings, Tuesday mornings, Wednesday mornings, I don't really care. But these are a topic for you and your team to jump in together, share with one another this podcast, and make your meetings easier, more effective, and productive. All right, let's get started with our Monday morning mashup. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Me and Mark Costas are actually on a podcast together. So I'm excited. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my, my, uh, my caricature is on the logo for Dental 18. I am uh, I am in the intro for dental the dental eighteen podcast and I've been on it like what once. Stop it! You're being <laughs> dramatic. You've been on it like a billion times. He's being dramatic today, everybody. Mark, uh, and it's been we have I have been missing you because you and I can like podcast like nobody else. We just have this good synergy and it's fun. And I I've missed doing the Mark Costas Cure Dent podcasting, so I'm excited. We're we finally got we finally found a time. The reality is we're just so busy that we talk to each other, but then podcasting tends to be on the back burner, but it's come to the front burner. So we're going to do it. You guys will be shocked how many episodes we start putting out. It's going to be great. So what I'm going to do is unbeknownst to you, I'm just going to hit record every time we're on the phone together. <laughs> and uh, and I'll just take snippets of our conversation that you don't even know I'm recording and I'll just broadcast them Perfect. as a Dentalpreneur podcast episode. Perfect. Does that sound I did good? this one time with you. No, I did this one time with you. I was like, Mark, I had the worst day and the next day on Facebook Live, you're like, so Kira, you had your worst day yesterday in an office. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Ruthless yeah. friend over here. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's all in the name of good, um, a good entertainment. So <laughs> speaking of, I've had, yeah. I've had one of those challenging days, you know, um, mm-hmm. not a bad day. Cause I don't believe in that. I believe that you kind of manifest your own energy in your own day. And, uh, whatever happens is just, you know, you either, you either respond well to it or you don't. So I'm doing my very best sure. to get through a challenging day. But, uh, as, as with everything else, there's, there's positives and negatives and there's things that you can learn. So anyway, uh, as per, um, as per par on this particular day, um, I've had, <laughs> I've, had several, <laughs> I've had several challenges. I've had to make lots of um, difficult decisions today. I've had to have lots of, um, shall we say, difficult conversations today. So it's just you know, some days, some weeks, some months, things just go by really, really nicely. But then, on a day or two or a week, you just get kind of pounded with with a bunch of challenges and a bunch of. Um, hard decisions and difficult conversations. Today was just one of those days, but uh, I get sure. to close out my day with you, Kara, which is which is so pleasant. But um, another just funny thing, it's just so par for today. Um, Jake Conway was leaving and he's going to Oregon for a wedding. So uh, he's going to be gone for a week and I'm leaving in a week 
for uh, nine days. So Jake and I, who cool. usually see each other every single day, minus maybe we see each other probably six days a week, we spend a lot of time together. Um, so we're not going to see each other for like three weeks, which is odd for us. So um, uh, sometimes, and this you might you guys might find this funny, but Jake and I walk around. Uh, the parking lot and out front, it's beautiful weather in Prescott, Arizona. So while we're on coaching calls, many times we'll walk around um, and we'll just like sit in our cars sometimes just to get out of the office. And I was on a coaching call and I was sitting in my car um, with the air conditioner on and just kind of doing my thing. And Jake walks out to his truck and uh, he gives me the peace sign and I was like, see ya. And then we both realized that, oh shit, I'm not going to see you for three weeks. So, um, he, he, he walks around to the driver's side, knocks on the window. I roll it down and he's like, and I was still on the phone and, uh, he's just like, I'm not going to see you. He like mouths the words. I'm not going to see you for three weeks. So he reaches out to give me a hug, gives me a big hug while I'm sitting in the, in the, uh, driver's <laughs> driver's side of my truck. Right. And I'm wearing uh-huh. my, my wireless AirPods, my left side AirPod, as he hugs me flies up in the air. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I still have my right side in. So I finished my, I finished my coaching call. He drives off. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, Oh, no problem. I just opened the door. And I'm like, okay, where's the AirPod? Can't find the AirPod. Cannot find the AirPod. <laughs> I take out both, both of like the, the floor mats. Can't find the AirPod looking through the, like all of the, all the cushions on my front seat and my back seat and the passenger seat and all the back seat. I'm like looking under, under the, <laughs> under the, under the stupid driver's seat. And I was like, I can't find the stupid AirPod. So. And if anybody doesn't have AirPods, like let's just interject. AirPods are life for us. Mark, I, I live for my AirPods. Oh, yeah. They have changed my life and I'm sure you're the same. So when we, I would have done the same thing. I would have like, ripped my whole car apart trying to find this airpod because they're that important. So I don't, I don't fault you one bit for this detailing of your car to find this thing. Yeah. So, I mean, literally I'm like looking through, we have like, and then I, and then I come in and I get Jonah and Zach and Kay. So for the last 20 minutes, we've been on our hands and knees with our iPhones flashlights on looking for the stupid airpod. Right. And we give up. I'm like, Jake, I texted him. I'm like, dude, check everything, check the cuffs, check the cuffs on your pants, check the pockets, check your shirt pockets. And like Kay, like patted me down. She's like, no, it's not in your pockets. It's like not in your collar. It's not in your shirt pocket. It's not in the cuffs of your, of your sleeves. So we totally gave up. We're like, that's it. I'm like, Zach, go inside and find the closest place that has AirPods because I need to have two AirPods. So, so I come in and I was like, okay, I'm, I, I, this is ridiculous. I untucked my shirt. Um, just one last F, one last check to see if it, it like fell down my shirt or I was about ready to take my whole shirt. I was about ready to go down to my tidy whities <laughs> <laughs> and, and the AirPod flies out. It went down my shirt and it was between like my, where I tuck in my pants and, <laughs> and, and, and the dress shirt and it flies up in the air. And 45 minutes later now I found the AirPod. <laughs> And just in time to get on the phone with you. So that's my, that's my, uh, that's my story for the day. That was a six minute story, probably way too long of a story, but. I like it. I was, I was expecting it to be in Jake's pocket. I thought that's where it probably went. And I'm like, oh, you just sent a little piece of you with Jake for three weeks. So yeah. there it went. Your AirPod. My AirPod went down my shirt, unbeknownst to me. And uh, so, uh, so tactical tips for everybody. Go snag some AirPods if you haven't converted over. Um, Mark gave me some massive social like shaming of getting, he's like, here, it's not 1992. Come on, get with the times. <laughs> so ever since then, I, it was definitely really good public shaming. And I am so grateful because I would, I will never go back to corded headphones ever. Yeah. I, it's just go. not worth it. So there you guys go. Efficiency right there in the making. You can get so much more done without corded headphones. So that of, course, done. of course I must <laughs> add though, I, I love the AirPods. It's annoying that you have another thing to charge, right? So I have to charge my my, <laughs> I, my Apple Watch. I have to charge my AirPods now. I have to charge my phone. I have to charge my charger just in case I get 
I, I end up somewhere <laughs> where there's no plug in the wall. So like I have Southwest like, Airlines? oh, dude, I you know, have cords. Have <laughs> I have cords coming out of every orifice. It's ridiculous. But um, I will tell you that if I sp- if if I could gather back all the minutes and hours that I've spent searching for one or two AirPods, I could do something really, really <laughs> valuable with that time that I that I got back. Um, anywho. Well, Thank you for listening anyway, to my awesome story. Yeah, That's how my I day is it. going. And uh, <laughs> it's it's closing out in, in a much more positive way because we're on the phone. So um, good, today good. you are on the road and you are on the opposite coast. You are in New York today um, doing some coaching in office. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. So um, a cool thing that you've kind of uh, been really uh, diving deep into is having these quarterly calibration meetings. We just had our quarterly calibration meeting in my um, flagship practice two days ago, and I'm going to share some really cool things that we did there that we had never done before. But uh, tell me about uh, this quarter quarterly calibration meeting you just had today since it's fresh in your mind. Yeah, so I have – and this is fun because, honestly, I didn't do this in an office. So Like full disclaimer, this was not Kira Dent being super cool when I was an office manager. I didn't even think about these. I didn't even know that you should do this. So this is thanks to Mark um, introducing me to the book Traction by Gina Wickman. Absolutely love it. I've become a firm believer. They even have EOS trainers out there. So I do not claim to be an EOS trainer. So can you tell, Um, can you enlighten people that haven't read the book yet what EOS stands for in the book? So you put me on the spot and I should know. I don't really know what the EOS stands for. And I'm oh, just being hundred percent honest because I can't remember what it stands for. It's the acronym. entrepreneur, the entrepreneur operating system. Thank you. I like literally, I cannot tell you guys EOS. I can tell you a lot of their acronyms. They have a lot, Yeah. but, um, but the, the bottom line is they teach you how to get traction in your, in your teams and in your business. And it's been very fun for me to find that little niche within dental practices and really start growing and developing leadership teams through these quarterly meetings. So I just went into a really fantastic office this week and we, I sit there with them for eight hours and I direct this and we follow the traction model of, I mean, you can Google EOS quarterly meeting and they will break down an entire agenda of how to run this meeting. And it was crazy because we decided to follow it to a T today. And I was shocked at how many issues we were able to solve and define. And to see this office go, I did their last quarterly meeting with them as well. And to watch and see how much traction you can accomplish in three months when you when you follow this model, it's unreal to me. It's so fantastic. And I just get fired up and jazzed every single time I do these quarterly meetings. So I'm not sure what yours is like, Mark, but I think we should share both ideas. And so people can get an idea of what these quarterly meetings are. And the reason they're important um, in the book, they talked about how human nature is we fall off track after 90 days. So we, we actually lose focus. And so it's really important for your business to bring it back to the forefront. And I remember, I don't know how long you were Mark, but when I first said eight hours for a meeting for a team, solid nonstop, we don't even break for lunch. We brought in lunch. We do not stop for eight hours. I thought they were ludicrous, but it's crazy how much you get done in eight hours when you do these meetings. Yeah. How how many hours was the one today? It was eight hours. I did from 7 a.m. to 4 East Coast time. So that was a little bit of an early morning for me, but that's fine. It was great. Um, that's like three o'clock but, in the morning for you. <laughs> it really was. I woke up at 2.30 a.m. my time. Oh my time. God. So no big deal. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Um, like you and I travel together and we've spoken together before. In fact, that just happened in Philadelphia. And, uh, we kind of do our little debrief in the morning and you know, you know, sometimes you fly in and you get it in at 10 o'clock Eastern time, which is seven o'clock our time. And then we'll have a meeting that starts at seven 30 or eight the next morning. So yep. for us, that's like literally four 30 or five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and we will have to be like full energy hitting the stage <laughs> at eight o'clock in the morning Eastern time. But that's like, that's like five o'clock in the morning for us. Right. I'm an early riser, but I get up at four 30 in the morning. So like to be full speed, bringing the energy, bringing the goods at five o'clock in the morning, that's challenging. <laughs> I would giggle when they, when they want to start me early on an East coast time. And I think, okay, uh, I'm just going to bring it. It's going to be great. And I cannot even tell myself, well, on my time zone at this time, otherwise it feels too weird. And I, it, nope, I can't even do that. So you no. just, you go to that time zone when you get there, but yeah, it was an eight-hour quarterly meeting today. Wow. The entire leadership team was there. 
Um, and we, we literally followed it. So you segue, I made the whole team play Telestrations, which Mark, if you have never played that, we are definitely going to play Telestrations. Ooh, yeah, but it that was sounds fun. fun. I, love, I love playing <laughs> games with the team. It's a great way to break the ice for, for long meetings. Seriously. Like I'm, I'm being it's for real. so fun. Yeah. It's so much fun. So we do that. And then it's, it's literally, what's really cool about it is, um, and Mark, you and I, we discovered this when we were in our DSI meeting together of so often, I think our personalities are those such that we love to solve problems right away. We want to just, you know, you tell me something and I go right into consulting mode, like, Hey, I'm going to solve your problem for you. I know you do the same thing. Like that is who we are. We are, we've wired ourselves and trained ourselves to be that way. But the bottom line is in these quarterly meetings, I see so often that issues will write them up on the board of all these different issues. And a lot of them can be clustered together. Uh, they can be solved. They're just a symptom of something else. And you're so much more productive with your time that you spend solving problems because you're solving true problems instead of just going bullet point by bullet point. Yeah. You, you actually are intentional about the problems you're trying to solve. Yeah, you're super focused you're on that one thing at that one particular time. And you don't move on until that issue is solved. Right. And I mean, today we spent a good hour and a half on morale and it was so exhausting, but we solved it forever. It wasn't just a quick glaze. We were figuring out why morale was low, why morale had these things, what was going on. And it turned out the bigger piece was the leadership team was so stressed out due to time that we needed to fix the time management piece for the leadership team. So they weren't as stressed and they weren't creating a lower morale as opposed to being any of the team members. Like that was actually the underlying piece as to why morale was low in this practice, which we never would have gotten at had we not spent this much time solving the problem. Wow. That's very cool. That's a breakthrough. It was a huge breakthrough. So that's, I, and I mean, if you want, I'm happy to go through the outline of how we did it since I just did it today, but I'd also love to hear your input of how you guys ran your quarterlies. Cause you said you even had some breakthroughs on your side of things you've never done before that were huge and enlightening for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, you want to go first? Or you want me to? Uh, you go okay. for it, Mark. Okay. So whenever we're doing a meeting, we're very, very intentional. So we use the acronym PETA, not pain in the ass. It's actually PETA and it stands for the P stands for presence and participation. <laughs> so everybody there must be present. Obviously they have to be in the room, but they have to be mentally, emotionally, and physically present. Okay. Psychologically mm -hmm. present. So everybody must be present and they must participate. So everybody that is in the room for the meeting is going to stand up and say something. They're going to participate in one way or the other. Can't tell you how many meetings I've attended or I've actually held in the early days where one person was basically talking at the rest of the group. There's no faster way to get zero engagement and zero follow through from a meeting than having, having one person talk to everybody else and, and everybody just passively listening. There has to be mm -hmm. presence and participation. So the P stands for presence and participation. The next is the biggest thing, and that is intention. We don't have meetings just for the sake of having meetings. So what is the intention? What does every single person intend to get out of this meeting. We do this exercise uh, in the beginning of every single dental success summit. We pause and we say, okay, everybody here, you left your, your friends, you left your family, you left your practice. You're not producing right now. There's the cost to be here. There's a cost to bring your staff here. What is your intention for being here? So what is the intention of every single meeting? What is the overall company intention for the meeting? And what is each individual's intention? What do they want to get out of the time that they're sacrificing mm -hmm. to be in the room at the time. So the next, that the I stands for intention. The next one is time. Simply we start on time and we end on time. So that means that if anybody's running long, if anybody's monologuing, if we get, if we get sucked down a rabbit hole and it's taking too long, we are always conscious of our time. Um, and we, we, um, make sure that we're, uh, on par to get through the entire agenda. And then that last A, of course, I skipped ahead, but the last A stands for agenda. Every meeting that we have, even if it's just a meeting between you and I, Kira, we always have an agenda. You're really good at sending an agenda out for even a meeting, even a 15 minute meeting. We, we make sure that we cover all of these things. Here's the intention of the meeting. Here's the time it's going to start. Here's how much time we have it. And here's exactly what the agenda is. So that's every meeting that we have uh, goes by that framework is the PETA framework. Um, we, I like that. we always start every meeting with recognition. So 
first positivity, right? There, there should like, this is kind of, um, a trick to communications in general. Like if you're having a difficult conversation, you want to have the bad news sandwich, right? So you want to say something nice and then you want to be critical or give the bad news. And then you want to end by saying something nice. So that's, that's the bad news sandwich, right? That's the, the, the uncomfortable conversation sandwich. So we always start with recognition. So we always say you're doing great. Um, here's what I love about what you bring to the position. This is a one-on-one um, interaction or, you know, if you're speaking to a group, you guys are great. We're hitting our goals here, here, and here. Um, I just wanted to recognize the following people for uh, going above and beyond. I'm going to recognize them now. And then we go into lag measures. How are, how are we as far as the numbers of the practice? How are we as far as the benchmarks, where we are in comparison to the benchmarks? What happened last month, the month before, last quarter? since the beginning of the year. Those are the lag measures. We report on those. And then the lead measures. What are we currently working on to achieve our overall goals, our 12-month goals, what we call our WIG goals? And this is, this is going back to the four disciplines of execution. So we mainly use the four disciplines of execution for our framework, for our, for our quarterly meetings, while you're using mostly um, traction in the EOS. For your quarterly mm -hmm. meetings, I love both of the mm -hmm. frameworks. So this is cool because we're I talking agree. about kind of the, the pros and cons of both. So we're, we're covering totally. uh, recognition. We have lag measures. We have lead measures. What are we currently doing uh, per person, per department to um, increase the likelihood that we will hit that wig, that wildly important goal, that 12-month goal? Um, and then we go over our quarterly calibration meetings. We call them calibration meetings because we are really big on role playing and making sure that we are calibrated as far as our core values, our mission, our vision, our foundational principles, but also the way that we talk in the practice to one another and mm -hmm. to the patients. So we all um, explain a crown the same exact way. We all explain the progression of carries the same exact way. The reason that we need to do a filling, the reason why a filling would turn into a crown, the reason why a filling would turn into a root canal. What is a root canal? Um, why uh, scaling and root planning versus a prophy? What's the difference between um, perio recall and a prophy? All of those things, we want to not just know what they are, but we want to make sure that we're explaining them to the patient base the same exact way and that we have calibrated language because there's nothing worse than a patient coming through each of their touch points through a practice and the front desk person explains a, a, a crown and why they need it differently than the back office, mm -hmm. differently than the hygienist, differently than the doctor. So it's really important right. that you calibrate your language. In addition, we're calibrating exactly what every transition sounds like. So a transition or trust transfer from the reception area to the back, from the back to seating the patient, from seating the patient to the introduction of the doctor, from the introduction of the doctor to the case presentation, from the case presentation to back to the front office for scheduling. All of those should be scripted and practiced so that everybody does it the same exact way. Um, what else were we calibrating? Oh, phone skills, how we handle an incoming phone call, those sorts of things, how we introduce the doctor to, um, to a new patient, um, all of those things. So we're, we're really, really heavy on role-playing and calibration in our meetings as well. That's a big part of our quarterly calibration meeting. And then um, this, this particular one, this was just two days ago. This was a really cool thing that, uh, that we did. You know, when you are in the same facility eight hours a day, you know, five days a week, four or five days a week, there's certain things that you don't notice anymore. Right. And there's certain perspectives right. that you don't get. So the, the patient walking through the practice has a totally different perspective. They see things from a totally different lens than people that are actually working in the practice. So we did this exercise where every single person on our team sat in every single treatment room from a patient's perspective, all seven chairs, they sat in every single waiting room chair, to get that perspective. They went to the bathroom, they walked down the halls, they looked left and right as they were walking down to see what patients see from the patient per, per, patient's perspective. And everybody had a little notepad and they, they wrote down treatment room one. 
and certain things that they noticed that they had never noticed before, like a, like paint was chipping or there was dust on top of the computer monitor or there was a dead bug in the light fixture or, you know, there are scuffs on the baseboard. So every single room we wrote down, everybody did individually wrote down what they saw that could be improved from a patient experience as far as visually. And uh, we wrote all these things down. And then we contacted our handyman and our painters and our equipment people and our computer people. And we said, hey, bind these cords because they look sloppy. Hey, we need touch up paint here. Hey, we need to, to, um, we need to uh, make sure that the carpet in this particular room is, is shampooed. Um, we need to put on our end of day protocol that we're going to dust the top of the monitors. So everything that the patients see that we normally don't see are, is now going to be corrected. So that's going to be a new part of our, uh, our calibration meetings every three months. I love that. Yeah. So that was, <laughs> that was just, that was the most recent one. We didn't, we didn't go too deep into issues. We cover a lot of our issues individually um, at our monthly performance reviews and our weekly wig meetings, our weekly growth meetings. But um, uh, I do think that it is probably a good idea to work some of the, the bigger issues that aren't resolved in those two other meetings during the, the mm -hmm. quarterly calibration meeting. So I'd love to hear exactly how you guys did your, 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 uh, your issues portion of your meeting. Well, I actually think as you're talking about it, we should, we should probably separate this into two separate episodes because I think what, what we did is my quarterly meeting was more for the leadership team. So you're not going to bring your whole team to this type of a meeting. You don't want that many people there. And this is where your leadership team comes into play for this quarterly meeting. But then you should also have a quarterly team meeting where you are calibrating. And Mark, I think you did a phenomenal job because I love that you have set time where your team actually walks through and role plays out all these different pieces that make up your entire practice. So these are the pieces that you're needing to do. I love that you came in with the team perspective. Of, this is how you get the team to actually implement and execute and stay calibrated with you as opposed to just pushing it under the, the set in the calendar every quarter. And you work through these pieces that really do need calibration consistently so you don't forget. And I think you just did a perfect way. Like to me, that is a perfect team calibration quarterly meeting. And the one that I will go over is more of a leadership calibration, um, leadership meeting that you then can figure out pieces that are broken that you can then take to your team meeting and role play out and execute all the pieces. So like the leadership meeting I just did, they're going to go back and work on handoffs and we fix a, a big piece of the handoffs, but now they have to go take that to the team and execute it with the team. So I think Mark, you just did a perfect one of, of what a team quarterly meeting does. And I think our next episode should be on what a leadership quarterly meeting would look like. Ooh, I can't wait. That is going to be a really good topic. Um, those C-suite kind of management team meetings um, are so, so important. And I don't do a good enough job of separating the executive team from uh, the rest of the team uh, for strategy mm -hmm. and making sure that they know how to manage more effectively and, and what to bring back to the team to run a smoother operation. So I love the fact that you spent eight full hours just with the leadership team. I can't wait to hear that one. Yeah. So, and I love that you just, you helped ramp me up to what, like you just gave so many tangibles of what a quarterly meeting should look like for your team. And then our next episode will tie into how you can develop and decide what topics you should take back to train your team on in those quarterly meetings. So Mark, as always, I think you're just brilliant. And we, we roll so easily back and forth unscripted. And they just feed right into each other in a very, very synergistic way. Well, thank you, Kara. I, I recognize yeah. that you're probably driving right now or in an airport terminal somewhere. Um, so let's uh, let's reconvene if we can here. Um, and uh, I would love to hear your whole um, agenda for your leadership team meeting. Can't wait. Absolutely. Absolutely. Likewise, it was super good to catch up. And as always, thank you for having me on the podcast and thanks for being on our podcast as well. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time.